Well, hey, I'm here with Kurt Bush, uh, our top candidate for campus pastor uh, for the Trinity Hospice campus. And I'm excited to get to do this interview with you, Kurt, and just give you a chance to be able to share uh, some of your personality and who you are. Uh, we're excited to have you out here in a couple weeks. Yeah, I'm excited to be there. Awesome. Well, like we said, we're wanting to give our churches a chance to meet you, and uh, we'll be providing different opportunities for that along the way. But maybe a question that I, I'd like to start off asking you with is, as you think about what's been happening in Hospers and what's happening with Trinity and Hospers unfolding and the possibility of you getting to be a part of that, I, I just wonder what, what excites you in this process? Yeah, so so we've got I've got kind of a limited view even still I feel of what's been going on and what's been happening. Uh, but one thing even in that kind of limited kind of catch up view of the last eighteen months is that I feel like it's just crystal clear that God's up to something. Um, it, it seems as though the the conversations we've been a part of that, that I've gotten to to hear the hearts of um, the staff, the hearts of the folks in Hospers. Um, it just couldn't be more clear that those conversations are coming from from the work of the Holy Spirit. Um, it, it's it's apparent that, that God's working, and I just I can't. I would love to be a part of of something like that. Um, I believe that we're called to go where God has gone in front of us, and where God starts uh, to work, um, and that our job is to follow. And, and it just could not be more clear. This is a, a good place to follow. Yeah, it has been cool to see, and God has definitely been moving and working, you know, throughout the whole history of both Trinity and Hospers for their collective, like, 230-some years, and yet it does seem that God is doing something new and something unique in this, in this act of two churches becoming one, and yeah, this whole role of a campus pastor, I wonder, too, if there's something specific that really resonates with you about the, the prospect of being a uh, campus pastor in Hospers. Yeah, so um, two things that, that I that I really um, that I really get excited about. Number one, I, I'm from a small town, um, and I'm not currently living in a small town. I, I feel I feel drawn to a small town. That's really enticing. Um, I also am really drawn to the the staff at Trinity. Um, so the campus pastor role is really enticing for me to kind of be able to, to encompass those two things, this idea of being a part of a really, uh, really awesome team and being a part of a really small community. So this seems to me like a really unique opportunity to do both of those things. Uh, you share about being from a small town. Share with us some of your uh, small town street cred, like <laughs> the most small town experience you've ever had from like growing up. <laughs> The most small town experience. Um, well, I, I think the first thing that comes to mind is just being able to um, leave in the afternoon, leave my house in the afternoon with my friends on our bikes and just be able to wander around the town until it gets dark and just come home whenever. I, I remember growing up with friends, we would head to the dime store with, uh, dime store, to Ben Franklin, the candy store with like 50 cents of, uh, of like dimes or, or nickels and we just buy as much bubble gum as we could with our shared resources and then we ride our bikes around to to different baseball fields the rest of the day so so kurt the reason that this has continued to push forward has been this vision around uh reaching the unchurched and the de church those who are not connected uh to god or have been disconnected and uh we even found a kind of shocking statistic that there's there's almost 900 people who are not connected with any church in a five mile radius around Hospers, Iowa, which doesn't wow. have that many people. And yeah. I, I just wonder what for you um, is exciting and mov motivating about, especially thinking about ministry to the unchurched and the dechurched. Yeah, uh, I think for me, almost I, I want to separate those two. I think when I think of unchurched, I, I think of Matthew 11, where Jesus says, "Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest." Um, I, I think we all search for rest. I think we all search for uh, belonging, and, and I think the unfortunate part is that when we talk about that unchurched population, I, I, I just really am saddened that they're they're looking in the wrong places. 
Uh, so I feel like we as the church, especially in hospitals, knowing there's such a large, uh, large population of those folks, I think we have a really unique opportunity to, to help those people um, really find that rest and really find that belonging um, that only comes uh, through the gospel and comes through the church. Um, I think when, when I think of the de-churched, um, I think we as the church have um, caused some hurt and pain over the years. Um, I, I think God's gifted me to be able to facilitate um, some of that healing with God. Um, and I, I long for that. I have a desire to see some of those um, some of those hurts healed. I have a desire to see the Holy Spirit transform some of those uh, attitudes towards the church, towards, towards Jesus. Um, and I believe God's gifted me to do that. I, I think there's also this population that, that I would fall into that um, grew up in the church and then for one reason or 15 other reasons stepped away for a season. Um, I, I know when, when that was me, um, there was just a really, really uh, big misunderstanding of what it meant to be um, called a child of God and what it meant to be a part of this thing we call the body of Christ, of the church. And I just, I long to see those folks come back and I long to see them find that, again, that rest and that belonging and that true identity um, that's found in, in being called child of God. So that is super exciting to me. Um, and I, I can't wait to see what happens when we lean into that. That's great. That's great. And, uh, and another main goal of this unfolding is really to be seeking the flourishing of our communities and not just, you know, from Orange City and this kind of epicenter, but to think about what does it look like to see the, the community of Hospers flourish. Uh, I wonder what you think about that, Kurt, about when you think about a small town like Hospers flourishing, what comes to your mind? Yeah, I, I think um, the first word that comes to my mind when I think of flourishing is kingdom and kingdom come. And I think all of our communities, um, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming Hospers is going to fit right into this. All of our communities have um, dreams and aspirations and desires and plans for the future. And all of our communities also have um, hurts and pains. And I, I think God wants to see those, uh, those reconciled. I think God wants to see um, those communities redeemed. I think God desires to bring those communities back to himself. So for me, flourishing means things like um, uh, relationships reconciled. It means um, value. It means a community like Hospers believing that God, that God loves Hospers. And God wants to see Hospers um, used for his glory and for their flourishing. We, we all think of how flourishing might look in our own lives. And I think the church has this unique perspective to say, we have, we have the good news that, that brings flourishing. We have Jesus. We have the gospel. We have th this God that wants us to flourish, wants us to be in relationship with him and loves us enough um, to make a way for that. So I think there's this unique tie that the church has to be a part of flourishing. And without the church being a part of flourishing of the whole community, not just those within the four walls, but those, um, those that look like us and don't look like us, um, without the church being an integral part of that, we fall short of, of actual flourishing. Yeah, I, I think you're right, Kurt. The, uh, you know, seeking the flourishing, not just of our, of those who are there, but you know, the, the whole community. And uh, yeah, one of the things that comes to my mind with that is, okay, so there's those that are already in, right, inside of our community, but then there's those that are outside. And, and so, you know, you might think about hospitality. What is it like to be welcoming to those that are outside the community? And uh, the reality is that the, uh, the community of Hospers is changing. The, the makeup of the people within hospitals are different than it was uh, 25 years ago. And uh, yeah, I just wonder as hospitality seems to be this, this key uh, value that we want to embrace, um, I wonder how that resonates with you in what ways you might uh, 
articulate hospitality as it relates to the church? Yeah, so when I think about hospitality and, and what I'm called to do in terms of how to be hospitable, I, I think I think I've always viewed this as um, this is a tangible, practical outflow of uh, what Jesus is is meaning when he says, love your neighbor as yourself. I think hospitality for me as an individual means that I, I need to be ready and willing to use my time, my resources, my myself um, to, to welcome others in. And others can mean, mean people like us that are just not a part of our community. It could mean someone on the margins of our community. I think it means anyone. Um, so I, I think for me personally, that that's what it means. And I think it, it, it it's hard, um, but I believe it to be a, a call uh, for all of us. I believe hospitality to be um, just a, a part of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. I, I don't believe hosp- hospitality is a thing that uh, that some of us are called to and some of us aren't. I believe this to be an inherent um, trait of of a disciple. Um, I also believe then that the church as the, the body of believers, the body of individuals, I think the response is much the same, uh, meaning that the church, we get the chance, whether it's local church or global church, we get the chance to use our time, our resources, ourselves um, in a way that welcomes folks in to feel um, like they belong, like they are part of the family because they are. They're fellow image bearers that God loves deeply. And we get to be the instrument to, to show them that. So I, I think for me, the church operates from this unique perspective that we get to welcome those folks in with, with the prayer that the Holy Spirit then makes known to them in a real way, this kind of flourishing and this rest that we've kind of been talking about all along. So I, I think they certainly go hand in hand, for sure. Yeah. Well, that's cool. So, Kurt, we're so excited for you to be able to come out to meet you in person uh, here in in Hospers and in Orange City uh, the weekend of October 27th. But I just wonder, too, if as we, you know, we we get to read your bio and hear a little bit about you that way. But I wonder if there's anything that you want to share just from who you are as we're getting to know you, as we're kind of getting to know what motivates and drives you, what what shares your, you know, is there a part of your heart that you want to share from mission and ministry uh, as, yeah, we just kind of continue to discern together if this, if what God is calling you to and God is calling us to are in alignment. Yeah, so, so my, my heart has been inclined to, to those folks that, that are on the margins of our community, whether that's people that aren't inside the walls of the church or those folks that in fact, look and act different than us. My, my passion is for those folks to, um, to come to know this Jesus, this living Jesus that provides us rest. Um, I, I love talking to people. I love asking people what God's up to in their life. I, I think those sorts of conversations that we engage with, with our brothers and sisters in Christ, I think those are the points at which we um, challenge ourselves to think the most. Uh, so as far as ministry goes, I, I love, love, love those sorts of times where I get to interact with people, again, probably mostly outside of the, the, the four walls. But um, yeah, I thrive in those sort of relational um, moments. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Kurt, for being willing to share with us. And we're so excited to get to know you a little bit more. And uh, yeah. I know for you, you've got uh, some things with seminary coming up. You've got some intensives, so I hope those all go well. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on October 27th. Yeah, thanks, Andy. I really look forward to it.